Hi Tappers! Today we're going to dive into the sexy topic of circadian rhythms. Ooh, did I sell it? Anyway, we hear all of the time how important sleep is. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Yet, we continue to place it lower and lower on the list of must-dos. Why? Well, we know we won't feel very good the next day, but is that so terrible? Or yeah, I mean, it does terrible things, but later, not tomorrow. But if you have wondered why you're feeling down in the dumps and you can't pin down a reason, this could be it. According to PubMed, there are serious long-term consequences for messing with your circadian rhythm. They include increased risk of cancer, metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of conditions that occur together that increases your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular dysfunction, so double whammy for the heart, immune dysregulation, reproductive problems, mood disorders, and learning deficits. Does it feel more important now? This video was suggested by Anonymous. You know who you are. So if you get something from it, drop them some love in the comments. I'm getting specific and sciency about this to help the importance of your Z's set in a bit deeper. You probably know the circadian rhythm is the name for the awake sleep cycle of the body. But did you know that each tissue of the body has its own rhythm? Yeah, everything has its own circadian rhythm. So how do they get synced up? That happens through what we call the biological clock. The biological clock is a system of cellular interactions through proteins, which sounds smart to say, but what does it mean? There's no actual clock in here, right? Not one with numbers and a face, but yes, there is a clock. It's in the brain. And it's created by the collaboration of a few key brain parts, but specifically a part called the hypothalamus, which receives input from the eyes about the amount of light that's in the environment. We are still hardwired to be awake with light and fall asleep in the dark. So why then, if we make it pitch black, do we still sometimes stay wide awake or fall asleep in broad daylight? Enter the dragon, cortisol. Cortisol has gotten a lot of attention for its role in stress, but it is key for other body functions such as sleep. Cortisol is an integral part of the biological process of waking and sleeping. In basic terms, when we sleep, the body is at its lowest for cortisol production, which allows for restful sleep. It slowly builds up as we sleep and peaks when our body clock says it's time to wake up. In this function, it's very helpful, but when we get into cycles of chronic distress, it also causes a chronic disruption of our sleep cycle. When we have heightened cortisol, the signal to go to sleep is muddied. The signal to stay asleep is weak. And the ability to build up cortisol all night is lessened, so your morning burst of energy becomes a muted energy nudge. This dysfunction, unfortunately, supports itself. So now you have insomnia and anxiety supporting themselves and each other. Not the collaboration I'm looking for in there, guys. So what can you do about this? Tapping! You knew that was my answer. Why is it the answer? Well, these systems are controlled by the subconscious brain, our subby. The subby is getting some information that you want to shift. Tapping gives you a direct line to talk to your subby. So how would you start? Well, I'll show you how I do it, and you can adjust that to make it work for you. And just to let you know, I have had this cycle of insomnia for most of my life. I'm talking young childhood, guys. I have had to stay on top of it or I'm up to like 3 a.m. And I like staying up late. So that makes this complex to shift myself to where I find my peace and balance in sleep versus staying up later. So I begin tapping. And the very first question I ask myself is why? Why do I want to stay up? I want alone time. Okay, the next question I ask is, why is that important? Well, because I haven't done anything for myself all day and this is my time to do that. Okay, is this more important than sleep? Usually at this point, my answer is yes. Tap to accept that. Even though I feel like this is more important than getting my sleep, I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, how much sleep? Is it important enough to lose three hours of sleep? Oh no, that's too much, I'll regret that. Okay, so I keep going until I find a time that feels appropriate. Let's say it's one hour. So one hour from the time my child is asleep to when I stop and go to bed myself. Can I accomplish feeling happy about what I'm doing by that time. Now here's where it gets interesting. If it's a yes or a counteroffer, cool, I'm done. I've struck a bargain. If it's a no, 
then I know it's not really about time. Now this is becoming a deeper issue. I can dig into it with a bubble graph, or if I don't want to, I can then ask, well, can I feel unhappy about this tonight and still get good sleep when I go to bed? I call this the magic and, because basically it's making allowances during the process. There's been an acknowledgement of the issue, which usually creates some leeway in allowing the solution you are after before the limiting problem is truly gone. Now you can't put it off for long, but with and, you can put it off. In finding an agreement for happy sleep, you can then go to bed, and even if other things pop up in your mind, you can point them in the direction of the agreement for sleep and let them go. By using tapping to create a steady sleep function, you can reset your cortisol levels your circadian rhythm and regain that rejuvenating sleep that was lost. For a deeper dive and more direction, check out Dawson's Insomnia program. I really hope this helps and I'll see you soon.